generation of the Nissan Z car, uh, starting out with the 240, 260 and 280 in the first generation, which were beautiful E-Type inspired sports cars. Then the 280ZX in, in the late 70s and early 80s, which was a much bigger and uh, more Grand Tourer type car. They added the X onto the, onto the Z, so it was the 280ZX, because X signifies uh, luxury and uh, slightly heavier, more Grand Tourer type car. And then along came the third generation in 1983, which is this, the Z31 Nissan 300ZX. And it's a car that, having uh, been born in the 80s myself, and as a kid, seeing 80s cars everywhere on the roads, this is a bit of a sort of dream car for me. I've always wanted to drive one. My first car was a uh, 1990 Nissan Bluebird, and I inevitably became a bit of a uh, Nissan fanboy. So I, I was always looking at these 300ZX with uh, envious eyes. It was the logical halo car to go for if you're a, an 80s Nissan fan. So what was it about Nissans that, that really got me, got me going back in the day? And the reality of it was that the car was, uh, it was cheap to buy for me at the time and it was utterly reliable. It was 15 years old, this, this Bluebird, and everything on it worked. Everything was just super high quality, and all that is true about this car. Like, the build quality is immense. Everything just feels completely solid and, and well screwed together. The car just starts on the turn of the key, just like... So they actually made um, over 300,000 of the 300ZX across the whole world. In Japan, it was known as the Fair Lady Z, partially because they the the guy at Nissan liked the film My Fair Lady, but also because the the engines they used wasn't just the 300, the three litre. So, but over in Europe and the US, the only engine available was was the three litre, although you could get it um, in turbocharged form. Now this is the naturally aspirated three litre. The NA had 170 brake horsepower, and the turbo had 225, which for its day, 1983, when this car came out, it was the most powerful Japanese production car ever to have been built. So 225 horsepower was a, a big old number back then. And although this car is the more lowly 170 horsepower, it, it, it actually feels fairly nippy. Uh, so the 0-60, probably around about eight seconds, it's a uh, rear wheel drive and it's got the manual gearbox, which is actually very easy to use and feels incredibly modern. So this is the long wheelbase version, which actually was the only version they sold in the UK. There was a short wheelbase one that was sold elsewhere in Japan, but uh, in the UK we got the long wheelbase, which was the 2 plus 2, which meant there's actually some seats in the back. Now they're not seats that you would uh, wish upon any adult human being. But, but nevertheless they're there and you could probably fit children in the back. The ride quality is uh, actually pretty good. You may be able to notice this car's got a couple of modifications, but one of them is the coilovers made by a bloke called Gaz, apparently. Now, I don't really know much about mods, as you can tell, but uh, the ride quality too bad at all and I imagine in standard form it was pretty nice um, and cushy and the seats are uh, the seats are pretty comfortable. So what's this thing like to drive? Now for the uninitiated it might be a bit of a scary prospect getting behind the wheel of a car from originally designed in 1983 but don't forget that the 80s was still quite a civilized and uh, relatively recent time and cars were not not all that different from today really. If you really think about what's changed, it's safety features um, and economy, but in terms of what cars are like to drive, this car feels like anything from today. It's uh, super easy to, to get, the, get the hang of. The, the clutch is really light, um, the biting point's quite high, I don't know if that's standard or just uh, the clutch on this car, but bit of a rattle coming from somewhere there. It's just a, a joy to drive. Yes, it's 
an old car, and yes, it's uh, only got 170 horsepower, but don't forget that it is uh, it does uh, displace three litres of uh, air and fuel, so it's definitely got a fair bit of torque. So from any revs, you can you can have fun. If I get down now to like sort of thousand revs and second gear, and then yeah, the, the power's instant. It's it's the the wondrous way of naturally aspirated motors with a big displacement and then it just goes uh, goes for many revs and it's just a um, very easy easy car to use now normally in my videos I uh, mention fuel economy because you know that's people care about that kind of thing but if you're uh, if you're wondering about fuel economy about a uh, three litre car built in the 1980s then uh, it's a bit like if you if you have to ask you you can't afford it so <laughs> uh, it, it it drinks fuel at a, a prodigious rate this this loud exhaust wouldn't be my uh, wouldn't be my choice I'd have kept it standard but uh, it, it certainly makes the car seem a little more special so I've uh, pulled over for a little break from the noise of that uh, cannon exhaust so you've got these gauges in the middle angled towards you, the battery volt status on the left, and then you've got oil pressure and temperature on the right. These, these are sort of a throwback to the, the earlier Z cars which had those gauges, but they're, they are just about in eye line, so you can look down and see them. They're not quite like the Hyundai Coupe that I, I road tested where the, they were a little bit lower and smaller and you, and you just found that you, you'd never actually look at them. But uh, I'm not. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're not that helpful, really. They're just they're, they're there to tell you that the cars are broken. <laughs> um, but then you've got this incredibly 80s orange set of instruments in front of you: fuel and temperature, two trip meters, which is uh, a funny little thing the, that Nissan liked to do in the 80s. And then the way that all these instruments are around you, like the the fog lights, the rear windscreen uh, demister and, and wash wipe cruise control the hazards the pop-up headlights everything is is all to hand around the around the driver in this sort of like kind of cockpit style dashboard the intermittent wipers you twist this little thing at the end here and it just feels so nice the way it, the action on it just smooth and damped the stocks themselves feel okay. Very dainty, very very little dainty ones. Yeah, and then the the cool thing about the target top, obviously you can take the target top off these panels here above my head, remove them, and then you've got top-down, kind of top-down open top motoring. But even with them in place, it's just like adds to the sort of airiness of the cabin. And the other thing, of course, about the, the sort of shape of this car is that uh, it's got a very practical boot, very big hatchback. Um, now, the load lip is high. It doesn't take the rear part of the, the light cluster and stuff up with the tailgate. So you do have to like pick things up and put them in over the top. But there's a lot of space back there. So it's actually a pretty pretty practical car for, its, for the style. There's just something incredibly brilliant about the fact that there's a three litre engine in this car and it's all the way back there and then you've got all this in front of it and if you're pretty handy with the fixing cars then everything is to hand there so let's see if it'll do what I said it would do and start on the turn of the key look at that starts quicker than a lot of, a lot of new cars so there's a button here to pop up the headlights and you can just see them at the end of the bonnet, which is superb. You can't see the oh, you can just see the other one as well. And that is just a, a great 80s view to have in front of you. So by modern standards, it's not a very heavy car. It's about 1,300 kilos, something like that. But for 80s standards, it was quite heavy. I mean, they, by the end of its life in 1989, they'd filled it with a lot of kit and tech, and it was getting quite heavy. But to put it into to contrast, it's uh, about the same weight as a modern day Vauxhall Astra. So, so although it is quite heavy, it, it 
it's not really, not in this day and age. This car, it's the most 80s looking car that I can, you know, think of really. Uh, maybe the DeLorean is about the only more 80s thing um, going. Just everything about it, including the pop-up headlights and just the general blocky but beautiful styling of, of the car. Uh, I really love it. And the face, its face, it's like, um, it's got this like sleepy look when, when the pop-ups are closed. If you're a fan of uh, quirky Japanese cars designed in the 80s, then be sure to check out the Toyota Serra review that I did, because that, that is a very strange car. I'll just, obviously the thing will be up here somewhere. I accidentally just set off in third gear and basically could, could barely tell that I'd done it. It, uh, it was as almost as happy as if it was in first. So I wasn't r slipping the clutch or anything, just pretty much set off as normal. So the, the Z31, I don't know if it's quite achieved the sort of cult status of uh, some of the other Z cars. It's not as, as famous or popular as the Z32 which replaced it, the, the, round, the much more rounded 90s looking car which was beautiful in its own way. Um, but it's also not quite as maligned as the 280ZX that came before it because that was quite an ungainly looking car. Now it'll be interesting to know whether in the future these things will command uh, a lot more money and I, I suspect that they will because how can a car that looks like this is built in a way that like this, built so well, how can it not end up being worth a lot of money? So that's my guess. If you can find one it might be a good uh, a good investment but uh, don't come crying to me if it turns out it's not. I'd uh, just like to take this opportunity to thank Dom the owner for, for letting me have a go in this uh, fantastic car. So this is the point of, of the video where I usually ask uh, oh do you have one of these cars or are you uh, thinking of buying one now? I suspect that uh, there won't be too many of those people um, around and you'll probably be watching this just purely out of interest. But uh, of course if you do have a 300ZX Z31, uh, please do comment below and uh, let me know what you think about the car. The story behind it, like when did you, when did you sort of get hold of it and where from and you know mileage and, and, and its backstory because there really aren't many of these left now and it's, it's such a, an interesting looking car. Just uh, thank you so much for watching, as always it's massively appreciated and, and as you've seen on this channel it's the cars that are coming are just, just anything really, uh, crazy quirky cars like this but also uh, modern, modern stuff, so stay tuned and be surprised by whatever comes next. I'll see you in the next video.